Hello and welcome, my name's Tabby, and today I'm going to be discussing the final instalment in the To All The Boys film trilogy, Always and Forever, Lara Jean. My letterbox readily informs me that To All The Boys I've Loved Before is my most watched film since I downloaded the app. Honestly, it's too on brand for me to be embarrassed. It's the film that introduced the world to Lana Condor and Noah Centineo as Lara Jean Covey and Peter Kavinsky, a classic romantic tale of fake dating turned real dating, and the two haven't looked back since. There's actually a sweet Easter egg in Always and Forever that celebrates their success outside of the franchise, so keep an eye out for it. Though the vast majority of people can appreciate the first film as doing something new and exciting in the YA genre, the second instalment, P.S. I Still Love You, was less well received. It had, it had its issues. <laughs> I'm pleased to announce that Always and Forever feels like a welcome return to form. It's a more mature film in many ways, in part because the characters are now slightly older, but also because the cast and crew have been doing this for a while now. Condor and Centineo embody their characters, their familiarity with one another is reflected in some of the best on-screen chemistry I've seen in some time. The film picks up in Seoul, where Lara Jean and her family are vacationing for spring break. She and Peter are still very much together, and having submitted college applications, are actively planning their post-high school future as a couple. Things become complicated when Lara Jean receives a rejection from their college of choice. Will they be able to make it work long distance, or will the miles separating them prove too much for their relationship? First things first, I think it's incredibly refreshing to see a protagonist in a YA film actually get rejected from a prestigious college. Looking at American media, you'd think they handed out Ivy League offers like free food samples at Costco. The conflict and growth that can arise from rejection like this at a young age is absolutely something that should be explored. Going away to college or university is a big decision, a big life choice, and finding the right place is crucial, and it's all too easy for films to give their protagonists exactly what they want without them really having to fight for it. We need more of that fight, more real-world heartbreak. The weightier moments in this are actually handled surprisingly well, from the conflicts within the main ship to Peter's relationship with his absent father. Condor and Centineo really step up to the mark here and produce some of their best work. I know Noah Centineo gets a lot of flack, I've seen Swiped, Sierra Burgess is a Loser, The Perfect Date, and SBF 18, so like, I get it. <laughs> but I also think he nails Peter Kavinsky. I really can't imagine anyone else in that role. It's the larger than life, no scrunch smiles that do it for me. That cocktail of charisma, understanding, and empathy. Let's take a moment to mourn John Ambrose, and then move on. Now, To All The Boys is nothing if not mainstream. I don't pretend like it's anything but Netflix's most popular YA film franchise. I haven't fact-checked that, but I'll be damned if it's The Kissing Booth. I personally don't mind a bit of mainstream entertainment. I think people who close themselves off to franchises actually miss out on a whole lot of fun. Always and Forever plays host to a whole load of cultural references, from The Big Lebowski to Say Anything, and from When Harry Met Sally to Fast and Furious. Lara Jean sits around reading Pride and Prejudice and watching Romeo and Juliet in acknowledgement of her relationship her woes. I know that a film spouting a reference a minute will annoy a lot of people, but I found it kind of charming in like a really cheesy way. The kind of film that justifies and validates my obsession with old John Cusack rom-coms. Love that for me. Uh, better a fondue than an empty belly, unless you're lactose intolerant. It's not a masterpiece, it's farcical, it's predictable, and sometimes just a bit cringe. I straight up can't deal with the younger sister. But it takes that difficult stage in someone's life, that major transitionary period between school and leaving home, and humanises it. It's still incredibly melodramatic, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of angsty baking and miscommunication, though perhaps not as much as you'd think. And sometimes characters will do and say things that have you giggling at the absurdity of it all. But it's not offensive, something a number of Netflix originals can't lay claim to. It's the kind of film that'll leave you with notes along the lines of Why do I love this? Why are all the books in the house blue? And He's so tall, I don't want to see him sad. <laughs> For better or for worse, I found myself really enjoying this film. Harking back to the original, it's a reminder of what made that first film so beloved. For me, it's far and away the best franchise navigating this young adult rom-com territory, even if the middle film does let it down. I'm giving to all the boys 
always and forever a 7 out of 10 and it's available to stream on Netflix from today. And that's all from me. If you enjoyed today's video, drop a like down below, let me know what you think of the film in the comments, and if you want more reviews, discussions, film festival coverage and countdowns, be sure to subscribe. Until next time.